every time someone comes and sees my artwork, they always have a different perception. And I think art kind of goes down to people's perceptions and your point of view and what you see anyways. And in French, because obviously I'm fully French and I moved to England, I think it was 2004. Um, and I always felt that with the language barriers sometimes I've had in the past, I very quickly translate something and it can't it's not always the exact translation so point de vue is quite the literal uh, translation of point of view and that's why I'm going with a French title because it is down to my point of view and you know your point of view is the viewer and just perceptions and how they can change and like points of view and between the mediums of sculpture and painting I think there's is down to point of view where the artwork lies in terms of what medium. In terms of my work, where it stands is completely in limbo between the mediums of sculpture and painting. It's neither one or the other. And I think I really like that idea that I'm bridging the two mediums together by creating work that doesn't really fall into just one category creating work in between that highlights both mediums but therefore becomes its own medium I think that in itself is evolution and I think you know me as a practicing artist will evolve as my work evolves and the work will evolve as I evolve I think it's a you know a relationship that constantly goes around you've got to start somewhere with the learning basics you start with the traditional materials like oil paint canvas and the stretcher bars. With sculpture, I didn't really have any training for three years because I went into painting and therefore I took on my um, knowledge base of painting to sculpture, therefore creating sculptures, painterly sculptures, and then moved my paintings into sculptural paintings. I really like thinking about painting in terms of what holds it together and that makes me think of support systems um, within painting and sculpture. And so I think metal might be something that I would go into in the future. The color palette is something I just feel evolves in terms of how I'm feeling, the seasons itself, where I am, uh, whether you know I've been here or I've been away, what influences me. What catches my eye is what is going to determine my colour palettes. So I think point of view, the colours for that palette of colours that have been with me for a little while now in terms of some shows that I've done uh, previously this year. And I went to France this summer just for a week to go and see my family um, that I hadn't seen in a really long time, obviously, due to COVID. And just going back up to my parents' home and just seeing it in full bloom, garden and like luscious colours everywhere, very light colours and I think that's where it came from because I'd, I'd be surprised if it came from anywhere in London at the moment. Um, but I also have a bit of a background in wanting to be in fashion so I feel that my colour palette can be influenced sometimes with the new trends, you know, what is there because um, I use, I love the materials in fashion in terms of the fabrics, which also explains a lot of, you know, these silicon works. Um, but I think that's probably where this colour palette has come from. A few different bits and bobs and just the colours that I feel are really going together really well right now. And I think light colours with one or two dark ones is what's working best for works at the moment. I think this show it shows you know my whole practice between the sketches at the start the preliminary sketches up to the really large works that you know really grab your attention and then I've created a new body of work that I haven't shown yet before which are sort of form of silicon tiles uh, which is really a 3D uh, model of you know the watercolor paintings and I really it's something that I wanted to communicate to the viewer is um, you know the textural aspect of my drawings and really wanting them to come out of the page. Sometimes my schedule is very much 
time-based because silicon, you know, is a chemical reaction. Once I put it on the floor, it cures and I, I can't really walk over it, I can't really go near it, it can't be dusty. So I think my schedule, my normal day in the studio always varies in terms of what works I'm creating. Some days it'll be draping the silicon, which is really fun, but also very, very time consuming. If it doesn't go correctly, it can be very frustrating. That's the word I was looking for, frustrating. So um, silicon, I came about using silicon because um, I wanted to separate layers of colour physically. I was getting very bored of painting layers of colour. I didn't find it interesting anymore, nor was I very good at it. Yeah, nor was I very good at it. So I wanted to separate the layers physically and, you know, I thought, what materials have I worked with? Which ones work? And I originally used latex. Latex then became a bit of a problem. Um, just in terms of it just did not work and then so silicon was the next best thing I really liked what, what, using a material that I'm creating myself that I am creating from scratch I'm get I get to color myself I didn't ha I was never satisfied by buying a material such as cellophane where it's already, you can't choose the colors, you know, you're limited in options. Whereas silicon, I get to mix it myself. It's very viscous, it's very, you know, enjoyable to work with. It is sticky and annoying, but it's once you spread it on, a, on the floor um, and then you can peel it off nine hours later, it's very enjoyable, it's very tactile, it's very satisfying and yeah. So that's how silicon came about through a problem, through just um, latex being a problem <laughs> and a mistake. <laughs> I think a work being finished in painting is a lot more tricky than in terms of what I do because you can always add a layer of paint, you can always retouch where with the material that I'm working with, not so much. Once the silicon has been poured on the floor, it can't really be adjusted. You know, it's kind of, well, you're gonna to have to wait until it dries now. And then once it's dried, you can't really do anything about it. There's no way of altering it. And I kind of like that relationship that I, that I have with silicon in terms that I'm quite an impatient person. So if I could always, tweak it all the time, I don't think I'd ever get any work done. I think London is a great city for art, however, I think it's really valuable for artists to get out of their comfort zones and that might mean to go somewhere completely different. It just pushes your way of thinking. My work will continue to evolve if I push myself to outside my comfort zone and that happens to be to go on these residencies that are abroad.